I saw a lot of comments. 
comments in the last video of people saying that they're about to sit, you know, mock exams um, and prelims and exams and things. So I thought it's a great opportunity to maybe go over one. So let's get started. Alrighty, so <coughs> let's do we fill out the front page? Full name of center. Well, usually that would be your high school. Um, but we're just, I guess, we're in my office. <laughs> um, down, I am in Edinburgh. I don't know why I've switched from caps to non caps. My writing's weird. Anyways, my name is Duncan. Or a title, whatever you want to call me. But, anyways, we have a formula list, so we might come back to this later on. We have, you know, the roots of a quadratic, the sine rule and cosine rule, some areas and volumes, and standard deviation, too. So, we might come back to that. We'll have a look. But without further ado, let's get into question number one. Question number one worth two marks. Evaluate two-thirds multiplied by one-fifth plus three-quarters. Give your answer in its simplest form. So a little bit of fraction work here. Uh, I am going to start by um, evaluating the inside of the bracket. So I'm going to add these two fractions together. So Let's get a nice little blue pen and we'll just, oops, that's a highlighter. Let's get a nice blue pen and we'll just, out here, we'll just work out what this is. So, one fifth plus three quarters. Well, we need a common denominator to be able to add uh, fractions. So the least common or the uh, least common multiple um, uh, is going to be 20. And when we multiply 5 by 4 to get 20, therefore we do the same on top. So we have 4 20 it's is the same as 1 fifth. And over here, 3 quarters as a fraction of 20 is going to be the same as 15. So therefore, this leaves us with 19 over 20. So, if we go back to our black pen, we would say that 2 thirds multiplied by 1 fifth plus 3 quarters is the same as 2 thirds multiplied by 19 over 20. And we can do a little bit of um, cross multiplication division type thing where we can actually just divide by 2. So that'll give us 19 over 10 and 1 third. Multiply these together gives us 19 thirtieths, which I don't think can get simplified any further. So that is going to be my final answer, which, do I underline it in red, maybe? I think so. So that is going to be my final answer for the first question. Hopefully we get two marks. I'm sure you guys can let me know in the comments if I make any mistakes as we go. But on to question two. Looks like we've done a little bit of work with functions and equations. So, given a function x cubed minus 2, I hope you guys can see this by the way, evaluate f of negative 3, so when x is negative 3. Alrighty, so, should be pretty straightforward, f of negative 3, so anywhere we see an x, we just want to simply input minus 3. So we're going to get minus 3 cubed minus
minus 2 and well minus 3 cubed is just um, the negative version of 3 cubed um, because it goes minus plus minus as the power of 3 so 3 cubed is 27 so it's going to be negative 27 minus 2 which simply equals minus 29 and we'll again give that a nice double underline thank god for the automatic feature that straightens the line for me I'm not very good at drawing straight lines freehand as you can clearly tell <coughs> so first couple questions down so far <laughs> we're doing all right all right question number three we have a nice diagram of a goal here this one's worth two marks the diagram below shows a cone with a diameter 20 centimeters and height 60 centimeters take the volume or calculate the volume of the cone and it tells us to take pi as 3.14 so obviously the volume of a cone involves um pi and because we don't have a calculator and even though it tells us on the formula sheet not that we all should know the volume of a cone um in our case which we are using I like this for you all, volume of a cone, right there, one third pi r squared h, one third pi r squared h, in fact actually what I could do, could I maybe copy this and see if I can take it down for us, that might be quite nice, let's have a look, paste image, oh that is beautiful. So that's our formula that we're going to be using. So let's just, with our diagram, input our values. So let's take a look at our values first. So we know that, well, pi is 3.14. We know that r is, well, we know that diameter is 20. So r is half of 20 because it's the radius so that is going to be 10 and the height h is 60 and this is all in centimeters as well this is probably why i talked about units earlier so with that we can just input it to our formula and we get that the volume of the cone one third times 3.14 I'll tell you what, I'll do this kind of multiplication symbol just because we're working with decimals um, times radius squared, so 10 squared which is of course just 100 but times the height which is 60 so let's make this a little easier for us well, a third times 60 is just 20 so it's going to be 20 multiplied by and the 10 squared is 100 100 times 3.14 is going to be 314 so now our volume just becomes 20 times 314 and to work that out well what I would do is just multiply it by 10 then multiply it by 2 so by 10 is 3140, double it, 6280, not bad. A uh, tricky question at first because of the amount of, you know, numbers that you're working with. Uh, I should also note this is centimeters cubed because it's a volume working in three dimensions. But a nice question, um, using some smart, they probably use these numbers intentionally just because it, when you're not using a calculator it's, you don't really want to do a third <laughs> multiplied by 3.14 I guess
guess you could, but not the nicest. Anyways, on to question four. We have a whopper of a diagram. Maybe a bit of geometry here if you like geometry. Be sure to check out my latest geometry video. And this question is worth three marks. So let's take a little look what we're working with. The diagram below shows a circle with center O. Correct. A, B, this line here, is a tangent to the circle at the point C. Tangent being a line that meets or touches the circle at a single point. A straight line. C, D is the diameter of the circle. Okay. Angle E, O, D. E, O, D. 68 degrees. Calculate the size of angle A, C, and E. Okay. We can do that. So, um, to kind of highlight what we're working out here, let's try and do this with my very shaky hand. A, C, and E. There we go. That's what we're trying to work out. So the angle is this angle in here. Not bad. So, let's take a little look here. What can we do? Well, I instantly notice this is just the sort of thing I do, that it's three marks. So it's probably three things it wants us to do, and I'd assume three different angles that we need to work out, or maybe two in order to get the final one. So let's see. Well, we can see that D, C meets perpendicularly, perpendicularly with the tangent. So this little angle in here is going to be 90 degrees. So ACE is 90 plus whatever this is. So we can work out that. We just add it to 90. Ah, I see. So CD, if we extend this round, is 180 degrees. So the angle EOC or COE, let's write it down. Um, usually when we talk about angles, we do this little weird symbol. It's kind of like a, a triangle without the last line almost. So we say angle COE is equal to 180 minus 68. which is going to equal 112. Therefore, because this angle, uh, this, because this shape uh, is isosceles, or this angle is going to be the same as this angle, we can just divide by 2 um, the remaining degree in a triangle. What I mean by this is width the triangle COE. This angle here is going to be the same as this angle here. And because there's 180 degrees in a triangle, if we do 180, subtract this angle, divide by 2, we'll get this angle or this angle. So we'll say the angle um, OE C. O E O C E, sorry, is equal to 180 minus 112 divided by 2. Yep. So well, we know that that's going to be 68 divided by 2, which is just 34. So therefore, angle ACE, like we said, is just 90 plus 34, which is 124 degrees. Let's put the degree symbol. Nice. 
is okay. There's probably other ways of working that out. You might have done it a different way. Um, how else might you do it? You might work out. You might work out these angles in this triangle because it looks like it is also going to work out the same way. Um, you might work out this angle here. I'm not too sure. Uh, oh, it actually puts a little bit down here for me. 124 degrees. So let's underline it as well. And we'll just move on to the next one. I've spent quite a lot of time on this one. So let's advance. Okay, on to question 5a. So this is a multiple part question which is worth two marks. Express x squared plus 8x plus 15 in the form x plus a squared plus b. So this here is completing the square. So we're going to have to do completing the square to do this. So I would say that x squared plus 8x plus 15 is equal to x, and we have the second coefficient, so x plus 4. We square it. We keep the remaining number, and we have to subtract the difference. So the difference of the square, so the square is going to be 16. So we must subtract 16, which is going to give us x plus 4 squared minus 1. And that was actually really easy. I like completing the square though. Part B. <coughs> Excuse me. Hence or otherwise, state the coordinates of the turning point of the graph of of that uh, quadratic, basically. So, it says hence or otherwise, so there's probably a quick way of working it out. Ah, yes. So because this inner bracket is going to be equal to zero, the x-coordinate of it is going to be the negative version of whatever this number is, so minus four. I'll put t. Oh, I should probably underline this, sorry. I'll put d, b. So it's going to be minus 4, and the other coordinate, I believe, is just minus 1. But I think you could actually work out this answer um, by doing your standard process of working out the turning point. So you know that a turning point occurs when like, the derivative is um, 0. So you could probably work out the derivative um, and do a bunch of stuff, but I'm not going to be doing any of that um, today. So that's that, nice and easy. Let's go on to the next question. What do we have here? Oh, another sort of question about lines and stuff. So it says, Find the equation of the line passing through the points negative 3, negative 1, negative 5, 7. Give the equation in its simplest form. This is 3 marks. Maybe working out the gradient, the y intercept, and then just stating the equation in its simplest form. Well, let's give this a go. So, we have our two coordinates up here, and I'm going to label them x1, y1, and x2, y2. And the reason I'm going to do this is because we are going to insert them into our gradient equation. So let's work out the gradient first. Now our gradient equation is y2 take y1, oops, that's not a 1, divided by x2 take x1, 
I'm going to work uh, horizontally here, so I hope that doesn't confuse the, you, confuse you, and that's just because I haven't actually got much room to do this. So y2 is 7, um, and y1 is minus 1, so it's going to be minus, minus 1, x2 minus 5, minus x1, which is minus 3. So simplifying this gradient up, we're going to get 7 plus 1, 8, minus 5 plus 3, minus 2, which gives us 8 divided by negative 2, or negative 8 divided by 2, which is minus 4 is the gradient. We've got the gradient. Let's work out the y-intercept. Now, for me, there's two different ways you could do this. The first way, and probably the easiest way, is take the equation of a line y equals m x plus c and insert your gradient and x and y for one of the coordinates or you could <laughs> be the uh, the big brain and use the formula y subtract b equals m x subtract a. I'm going to do the big brain method. I know this is a formula you might not have seen. It's not really actually used all too often. But what it basically does is gives you the equation of a line given a point a, b, where a and b is in our case one of these coordinates with x1 and y1. So I'm going to relabel um, this one. Actually, I'm just going to do it in blue, just above it, A and B. So once I've done this, I'm going to go back down here, and we're going to have Y subtract B, so that's plus 1 equals M minus 4 X and x is just x, subtract a, which is plus 3. Now that, technically, you could leave it like that in my eyes, but they say in its simplest form, so I am going to expand on the right-hand side. And I will add or subtract 1 from both sides. That will give us subtract 13, and that is going to be our equation of the straight line. Speaking of which, that was a horrible straight line right there from me. And so was that. There we go. And that was a pretty good question. I always loved those kinds of questions when doing uh, National 5 Maths. Let me know if you did it the other way. Hopefully you got the... Uh, the same answer. <laughs> Question 7, a little bit of algebra here. We are asked, and this is worth two marks, to change the subject of the formula d equals b plus 4 divided by c squared to b. Now, I'm weird. I'm going to just copy this. Oops. And paste it just so I can visualize it a bit better. And put it here. Okay, so to rearrange to B. Alright, well, let's start by isolating B on one side. We want to get rid of this fraction. So let's multiply both sides by c squared. This will give us d c squared equals b plus 4. And once we've done that, we're just going to subtract 4 
Is it as easy as that? I mean, it is. Just two marks. So, maybe... That's just one of the easy questions they chuck in. Nice and easy. That's going to be a short timestamp, I best believe. Alright, on to some trigonometry. We have a trig graph, in particular, the sine graph. <coughs> well, actually, part of the graph y equals a sine bx is shown in the diagram. And that would be because this is not actually your standard sine graph. It is sine, but it's been modified, you know, it's the amplitude's been extended um, or by a factor of three and the uh, uh, the shift has changed as well. Um, and that's actually what the question's asking us. <laughs> State the value of A. Well, A is multiplying by the sine. That's how I remember it. The, if, that's the way I always remember it. If y equals sine x, if you stick a factor in front of that, let's say 5, you're multiplying it by 5. So whatever happens to the y, you're multiplying it by whatever that is. So that's going to be 3. And, oh gosh, am I going to have to underline that as well? <laughs> I just say that because it's a one number answer. And in the second part, state the value of B. So for here, usually B is 1 uh, in the standard sine graph. And that is when sine goes the full 180. So now it is shifted down to 45. So basically, what if we divided it by to get to there? Well, that would be in our case, so B equals 8, and it is literally as easy as that. That's probably going to be like one mark each, right? Yep, one mark. Okay, on to question number 9. diagram shows triangle A, B, C. And we have a few lengths. A, B is 7 centimeters, B, C is 3, and A, C is 5. Calculate the value of cos B. Give your answer in its simplest form. So we want to work at the cosine of angle B. Now we actually remember from our formula sheet I never remember it off by art. We have the cosine rule up here. But which one are we going to be using? Can you tell which one? Is it going to be this one? Why is it going weird? Oh no, that's the eraser. Is it going to be this one here? Or is it going to be this one? here. It is indeed going to be the second one, and the reason being is because this one here, if I am to copy it and bring it all the way back to where we are, let's stick it in there, you will see it gives us the value of cos A. Now, although you might be thinking, we're working out cos B. Well, you could either rename these letters or just change the values if you like. I personally am just going to treat it as if they were the correct letters. So in my case, or our case, cos B is going to equal, we'll just switch B for A. Uh, in fact, actually, let's rewrite the entire equation. Let's do this in blue. I think this would be fun for us to do. So 
let's rewrite the entire equation to what it becomes. So we're going to have cos b is going to be equal to, instead of b, whatever a would be in this case. So ours is going to be, um, so it is the line opposite the angle that you're working with. So ours is going to be the line opposite angle A. So ours is going to be BC squared plus the angle opposite C, or the line opposite C, that's AB squared. Subtract the line opposite whatever this angle is, and ours is B. So it's going to be AC squared, and it's all divided by 2, and then the first two values, so 2, A, B, and I'm actually just going to bracket that up, uh, B, C, I probably should have switched them the other way around, sorry if that's kind of annoyed you, but same thing. So in our case, B, C squared is b to c squared, 3 squared, plus ab squared, ab is 7 squared, and then ac squared, minus 25, divided by 2 times ab, 7, bc, 3, Okay, let's continue this. So 9, 49, minus 25, hopefully this simplified to something nice. 2 times 7, 14 times 3 is 48. No, it's not. Um, what am I on about? Uh, it's 42. Then when we simplify the top part of the fraction, we're going to get 58 minus 25, which is 33 over 42. Now that seems pretty weird, um, but it is divisible by 3. I know this gives us 11 over... 14. Does that simplify further? I don't believe so. So I think it's 11 over 14. If I've done that all correct. <laughs> um, I pray I've not messed that one up. If I have, then... Hey, it was just a little bit of mental math I probably messed up on. Alrighty, question number 10. Tommy, <coughs> Tommy buys flower seeds from a website. Tommy is given a 30% discount. He pays £16.10 for the seeds. Calculate the cost of the flower seeds without the discount. Okay, so we know that 16.10 is equal to 70%. The way I would do this is probably work out 10%, and then that would help us work out 100%, which is an appreciation. So we're doing a bit of appreciation here. So to work out 10%, how do we do that? Well, we are going to just divide this by 7, so let's just, let's just be nice and user-friendly. 1, 6, 1, 0... Let's just do a little division over here. We're going to get two in that. We're going to take the uh, two over and we're going to get two pound thirty. So ten percent. Two point three. So a hundred percent. Just multiply that by a uh, hundred. So that gives us twenty three. So. 
symbol. 23 bones, or as we say as slang, 23 quid. Okay, this has not been too bad so far. I'm quite enjoying this, it's quite peaceful and uh, quite relaxing. So we have a bit of um, indice work here, index work, simplify, m to the negative 2 to the power of 4, multiply by m to the negative, negative 5, and give your answer with a positive power. Okay, so we're going to start with this first bit, and this is going to give us m, well we're actually, I'm just going to write out like this. So I just used to like to do this. So that gives us well, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And this time, because we're multiplying, we add the powers. So that gives us m to the negative 13, which as a positive power is 1 over m to the 13. And that is going to be our final super duper Oops. question number 12 express 4 divided by x plus 2 divided by 5 over x plus 2 squared where x does not equal to of course because then that would be 0 on the denominator as a single fraction in its simplest form. Okay, so I'm going to do something similar to what I did earlier here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to say that this here is equal to, and we're going to have two more fractions. Gonna have the same with the first, but the second one we're gonna flip it because, for those who know, when you divide two fractions, all you have to do is flip the second one and multiply, and it's still the same. And now we can do the same thing we did earlier where we cancelled this out, um, and then this is just gonna go away and become one. Now we're just going to get um, 4 times x plus 2 divided by 5. Now how many marks was that? That was 2. So I'm assuming that's how they want us to give the answer. You could technically expand that top bracket, but honestly... I don't see it. I see that being nicer in my eyes. On to number 13. A little bit of certs. We did some indices. Now we're doing some certs. Alrighty. Sorry about that. Um, so let's begin. So we have um, square root of 10 multiplied by square root of 10 minus square root of 2 plus 8 root 5. Okay, so when we expand the bracket, we're going to get root 10 times root 10, which is just 10, but I'll just write square root of 100 just to keep things nice. Minus, and then we're going to get square root of 20. And then we're going to have plus... 8 root 5. Now, because we have this 8 root 5 at the end, I feel like we probably want to get everything, or as many things as we can, in terms of root 5. So, we have, well, this is just 10. This here can be written as root 5 times 4. And the reason I do that is because this is the same as 
the square root of 4 to root 5 plus 8 root 5 and this will give us a final answer of 10 plus 6 root 5 so I probably did that a bit longer than needed but heck, it makes the video more relaxing when you explain things even further Okay, wow, this question. Sketch the graph of y equals x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 3 using the axes provided below. On your sketch, show clearly the points of intersection with the x-axis and the y-axis and the coordinates of the turning point. Okay, we got some space below to do some markings. We are. In fact, I can maybe squeeze in and up here. So. Well, actually, the coordinates of the, um, uh, that well, the intersection with the x-axis is pretty easy to work out. The intersection of the x-axis, let's put x-axis intercepts. Well, we are just going to have, um, x plus 1 equals 0 and we're gonna have x minus 3 equals 0 which sends them to be x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to 3 so we're gonna have somewhere here doesn't matter if it's you know perfectly to scale and then somewhere up here I'll label it all after Y axis intercept. Well, we all know that the um, graph or the um, the quadratic will cut the y axis when x is equal to zero. So whenever x is zero, that will give us y. So y is equal to. It's just going to be one multiplied by minus three. As you can see when we put in zero so that's going to give us minus three so somewhere gosh i've really not drawn this to scale have i <laughs> somewhere down there basically it's going to look very ugly i want to make it look somewhat nice for the video so let's stick three like there um and the turning point, which I've just realized is probably going to go off the graph because it's clear that it's going to go like this. Um, so let's see. Actually, maybe I was fine back up there. The turning point is going to be... Um, halfway between... values so halfway between minus one let's just write dp halfway between that is going to be what's well, four points so it's going to be two along so it's going to be one and if we have the x to work out the y we just substitute it in so one plus one is two one minus three is minus two so two times minus two is minus four so the turning point is 1 minus 4. Yeah, we'll just chuck it in like there. This is not going to work, I can tell you now, but nope. Give me a sec. Ah, this is horrible. This is horrible. <laughs> oh, wait. Um. What actually let's do that and then let's just move these along because that looks really nice so this here is what was it minus one this here is three minus three this is definitely not minus one 
uh, 1 minus 4, but it'll have to do. And then R, we'll just label this y equals x plus 1 x minus 3, and that'll do. <laughs> I know it's not very good, but that's our, that's our diagram. Nothing really to underline. Then question 15 is, well, it's got multiple parts. Part A. This looks like it's probably a bit of algebra combined with geometry. But it says a triangle and a rectangle are shown in the diagram. We have this really weird triangle expressed algebraically. And then we have a rectangle also expressed algebraically. Find an expression for the area of the triangle. Well, the tri area of a triangle is just to have base times height. So the area of our triangle is going to be a half times 3 times x plus 12, which I guess you could write 3 over 2 x plus 12. A nice one mark. Part B, given that the area of the triangle is equal to the area of the rectangle, find algebraically the value of x. Okay, that's interesting. Well, see, the way I think about it is if this is the area of the triangle. If we work out the area of the rectangle algebraically, those two will be equal. So if we set them equal to each other, it's just an expression where we can solve for x. So let's take, uh, because I'm running out of space, let's just take this on down. So the area of the rectangle is going to be uh, base times height. So area of rectangle is equal to 8 minus x times 6. Now I'm actually going to expand that just because we'll end up doing that anyway. So 8 times 6 is 48. Um, and then minus 6x. So since area of triangle equals area of rectangle. Oh, I should again underline this. And while I'm up here, I'm going to copy this. Of course, copy, copy. So since the areas are the same, we know that this is equal, whoops, is equal to 48 minus 6x. I guess we could have expanded that as well earlier. Ah, well. Um, so we're going to get 3 over 2x, which is not very nice, plus 3 over 2 times 12 is going to give us 18 equals 48 minus 6x. Let's multiply through by 2 to get rid of the fraction. So this is going to give us um, 3x plus 36 equals 96 minus 12x. And then what we're going to do is isolate. So let us add 12x to both sides. Um, oops, I'm actually doing something very, very bad here. Should not be writing equals there. Can't do that. Um, so add 12x, 15x, and then subtract 36, 16. Um, and this gives us 15x is equal to 60, which is very nice because that gives us x is equal to 4 and it's centimeters. I hope I haven't missed any units earlier. 